Hi, I'm Jen from Tea Leaves and Tweed, and welcome to another historical tea session. This morning, we're taking a look at one of the earliest written records of the Gong Fu tea ceremony, as it was originally practiced in the Wuyi Mountains in China. Noted gastronome Yuan Mei, who wrote a book called the Suyuan Shidan, pardon my pronunciation, in the late 18th century in China, included a section on Wuyi tea. Now, I was fortunate enough to find a translation on a blog by Sean Chen, which I'll link below, that tells me what May's thoughts were about Wu Yi tea. Now, while it is likely that this style of tea brewing dates to much further back than the 18th century, this was one of the first written records of it in mainstream Chinese literature, and it's one of the first primary sources about the ceremony. It doesn't go into very much detail, but it's just a very beautiful way of describing it, so I'm using this source. Yuan Mei writes that he used to dislike tea from Wu Yi because he thought it was bitter and medicinal. However, when he had it prepared in the traditional way, he found it delightful and possibly even better than a fine tea such as Longjing. So I have some roasted oolong from Wu Yi. It is known as Yancha or rock oolong. It's a very specific kind of tea. I also have a traditional clay pot from Chaozhou. This is a porous clay pot that's perfect for brewing oolongs. And three cups, because the perfect amount of people to brew tea for is supposedly three, even though I'm only brewing by myself. Now in the text, Yuan Mei points out that the pot was very, very small, and he said that the pot hold, held no more than maybe a little over an ounce of water, or one liang, and that it was about the size of a citron, which is kind of like a Meyer lemon. It's a fragrant lemon. So I have a lemon, and this is probably bigger than the citron that Mei was talking about, but I think my pot is doing okay. This pot holds a little more than an ounce of water. And he said that the cups were no bigger than walnuts. And well, my, my cups are maybe a little bit big, but they'll only be filled a little bit. So let's brew. So here I have my brewing set up. This is a much simpler form than the Gong Fu tea practice takes today. Remember, this is a session that is inspired by the writings of Yuan Mei, and he does not go into great detail about the ceremony and ritual involved. So we have our Chaozhou pot, and this is a red Da Hong Pao clay pot that I got from Bitter Leaf Teas recently. We have our hot water. This is boiling water, and I'm going to warm the pot. and warm my glasses. And now I've got about four grams of Shui Xian Long Tea from the Old Ways Tea Company that I'm going to warm up in my pot. And one of the tools that is used in the Gong Fu tea ceremony are these tongs, which can be used if the glasses get too hot and to keep things sanitary. Now the nice thing about rock oolongs is that they are not only good to the last drop, but good to the first drop. So there is no need or reason to discard your rinsing water. So let's give it a taste. Now in his writing, Juan May writes, I used to dislike tea from Wu Yi and found it thick and bitter as if one was drinking medicine. However, in about 1786, 
he was vacationing in Wuyi and touring the Monting Peak to visit several temples. The Taoist monks clamored to make tea for him, and he noted that their cups were as small as walnuts and the teapots were as small as a citron, each teapot holding no more than one lang of water. When he drank it, he did not immediately swallow, but breathed in the fragrance and then tasted the flavors. And in this way, savored, meditated, and dwelled on the experience. Indeed, its pure, refreshing fragrance wafted up my nose and left a sweet aftertaste on my tongue. So we have our beautiful Shui Xian Rock Oolong has a beautiful roasted sweet fragrance like uh, roasted nuts or like a hazelnut cake mm. and that mineral flavor the rock taste of rock oolong lingers on the tongue, it's in the mouth feel, it has that very almost slippery mouth feel of a really minerally mineral water, and then as you swallow it, it just has this lubricating buttery sweetness that lingers in your mouth. Mm. And this was just a very flash steeping with a fair amount of leaf in a very small pot. So I could see that if you're used to drinking tea that's been either steeped for a very long time or even steeped grandpa style from the beginning, this is a very different experience. So because I'm drinking by myself, I have three cups of tea to finish, but Yuan Mei did write that the tea can be steeped three times without losing flavor. So I will meet you back here for another steeping. So now we can steep our rock oolong tea again. The nice thing about this draining tea tray is that you can pour water over the top to help keep it warm as the tea steeps. Everything does get very hot. And they use this method of pouring into the cups. because this was before the widespread use of the fairness pitcher, which I've used in my previous tea videos. So this was how they were able to get an even distribution and color of tea liquor. And you can just see how beautiful, how beautiful is this tea? The aroma is just amazing. And I have these walnuts here, and I can smell walnuts and hazelnuts. Shuixian means narcissus, and I just get so much buttery, fragrant, roasted nut scent from this. But I almost don't get that floral that I'm so used to in an oolong. Mm. You really do just want to sit and meditate on this tiny little cup of tea and it can take ages and ages to drink this one tiny little cup of tea. It's not meant to be gulped or drunk in large quantities. You drink a little bit and just savor it. Mm. It's a wonderful tea to share with a group because there's just such a big punch of flavor in such a small amount that I had some friends over for a tea gathering yesterday and I even used this tiny little pot to serve the three of us because three is the perfect number of people for a tea gathering 
and even just this little tiny taste gives you so much big flavor and it's wonderful for a group of people, particularly one that hasn't tasted rock oolong before because it's just such an interesting experience. So now that I've mused over another steeping of tea, why don't you meet me back here in a bit for the third steeping? So now it's time for a third steeping. And once again, these clay pots are so fun because you can uh, just spill with wild abandon and they keep the tea nice and warm. They marry with the flavor of the tea very nicely. Um, sound of the tea going into the little glasses tinkles and it's like a bell and you can see that there's no reduction in that beautiful color it's still oh there's maybe a little bit of spice or um, incense coming through that's a really interesting so there's no reduction in a flavor but new flavors come out mm, and you just get that same beautiful sweetness and Definitely not bitter or medicinal. So this was uh, Tea with Yuan Mei, one of the first written records of the Gong Fu tea practice using Yansha from the Old Ways Tea Company. So I hope you enjoyed this tea session and I hope I'll see you again sometime. Bye.